whatever you want, whatever you need, everything you want done, baby, I'll do it naturally. Cause I'm every woman, it's all in me, it's all in me. I'm a woman. I completed my, my studies, you know, I completed my studies. I did a diploma in, in, in diploma in business, business, uh, commercial business, then I further uh, and uh, to, to get a second diploma at Magda Pekuran Technik Kuala Lumpur, you know, then I started becoming a teacher, okay, it was a very noble profession, I love it, you know, I enjoy it so much, but I cannot pursue it, I cannot pursue it, okay, that is due to sexuality and also finance, because I need to support my sisters, okay, so I quit teaching in, in, in Kota Baru, Kelantan, come back to Penang, okay, and started uh, started uh, wearing female, started wearing female dresses, you know, but only uh, at night, only at night, okay, Doing, uh, looking at how showgirls work, during that time we, we, we have quite a number of showgirls in, in Penang, it was just the beginning, it was just the beginning, but I still cannot pursue it because I still need uh, to have a stable income, need to have a stable income uh, to support my younger sisters all right there are about six of them below me and and they need to they need some 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 good uh, financial uh, help and or support okay so I apply to work in Brunei I was teaching in Brunei okay for about four years four years okay then um, after four years uh, yeah after four years I think enough is enough enough is enough you know I met a boyfriend there as well. I met a boyfriend there as well. So he offered me to move with him, you know, from time to time to to Europe. That was Switzerland. That was Switzerland. You know. So I went there, you know, and then come back to Malaysia. And things uh, didn't work out. It just didn't work out, you know. So I need to come back to Penang. Coming back to Penang. Coming back to Penang. I was thinking of. Uh, leading a normal life, you know, I apply for so many jobs, okay, for so many jobs. Even as a hotel receptionist, I didn't get it. It was all rejected because of my appearance, okay, because of my appearance. Then I said, well, enough is enough, you know, uh, because when I was in Europe, I saw one fat friend of mine, okay, he's not uh, good looking, but when she dressed up, you know, he, he performed in, 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 in a club, and uh, the crowd seems to love it, okay? And at the same time, I, I know I'm able to sing. I know I'm able to sing. So I use that talent, okay? I use that talent in Penang uh, to, to demand, to demand from, from a pageant organizer who, who's, who's in a desire, in a, in a desperate need of, to find an MC for a pageant. So I said to him, okay, I'll be your MC for the pageant tonight, okay? But then again, you must allow me to sing. Okay, you must allow me to sing. So that that gets uh, everything started, care. Okay? Yeah, that gets everything. Teaching in Brunei, it was uh, it was totally different. It was totally different. Yeah, uh, I was uh, in 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 Brunei. Uh, their medium of instruction is in English. So you know, I went there at the same time. Uh, besides getting salary, I got a chance to improve my communication skill in, in another language that is English, which I hardly use here in Malaysia. You know, so and then you got a chance to meet, uh, to mix with so many expatriates from from many other countries teaching there. So more or less, you absorb each other's knowledge, you know, and use it in your life in the future. Realization was very much earlier in life. Even when when I was in primary school, I always realized that I'm different from the rest of the boys. You know, I'm from boys' school, uh, camp, yeah. I'm from uh, Bukit Mertajam. It's, it, it, uh, Bukit Mertajam uh, Stowell School is it's a boys' school. BM High School is during my time it was totally boys' school. So I, I can always see the difference uh, at a very young age. But I'm not uh, the same like the rest of the boys. Yeah. Mm, well, I was in standard five. I noticed that I'm totally different. Yeah, totally different than than all. Uh, 
the rest of them. But then again, uh, the social conditioning is, is like that, you know. If you were born as a boy with a boy's name, having a male genitalia, uh, you are considered as male, you know. And later on, you, when you progress in your life, you notice that you are not happy having to wear a boy's uniform. You always uh, find time on your own to to seek the femininity in you. Then you know that you are different. You know, sexually you are different. My mother knew it very well, you know, I just feel like, you know, I didn't tell her of my condition because she knew it very well. When I was five or six years old, she herself uh, have to ask my sister to buy cloth from, from, from town because I used to steal uh, my neighbor's dresses to wear, you know. So she said, okay, go and buy. So she made two for me. My sibling, oh, we, we are close. Uh, I mean... Of course, they have to be close to me because I'm the one who supported them when they were schooling. Yeah, you know, even even when I was working in Penang Cat, you know, I was so scared. I was so when they were small, I was so scared that you know the fridge might not be having enough food and everything. So I think uh, that's the repayment that I get from God. You know, they are they are quite close to me. They are quite close to me, and each one of them is doing well now. They are happily married. You know. And I still go back, and even even my nieces and nephews, they are very close to me, you know, no prejudice. I think they are being trained by their parents, you know. Okay, when uncle come back, please do not call her uncle, call her something else, and do not mention all of these taboo words like pondan, you know, matnya, and don't mention, okay. Just call her whatever you guys want to call her, just be nice. I still remember cat the, 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 the very first feeling that I have when I put my, my first skirt, you know, it was so liberating. Oh, w w seriously, seriously, when I was 15 years old, uh, yeah, 15 years old, I, I, I bought a, a pair of uh, uh, skirt for myself. When I put it on, I feel so liberated. I feel, okay, this is me. This is a very nice feeling. And the nice feeling remained until today. That it was so liberating. It was so liberating. I think by, by, by that time I already know what is my destination. It's just that once in a while being a human who, 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 who is not really matured yet, you know, you, you are being pulled back by your religion, by your culture, and then by your family, you know. You, you do not want to embarrass anyone in your life, you know. You, do, you try your very best not to embarrass anyone in your life, but it can't be helped, you know. There will come a moment where you say to yourself, I had enough, I wanted to be myself, I want to be happy. It was very painful, I must admit, you know, it was very, very painful. And, you know, you just wake up and suddenly your shoulder feels so heavy and there is something in between your two legs, you know, with blood oozing out, you know, and, uh, the blood even flow right to your butthole, you know, and you have to really nurse it after coming back from the hospital, you know, it's a very tedious 44 days, it was a very tedious 44 days, and uh, when people talk about complications, yes, there are complications to some who went for SRS, in my case, Alhamdulillah, no complication at all, you know, no complication, I think it is because I went with the right mind, with the right mind, you know, even before the operation, the doctor will ask you, is it for work, meaning am I a prostitute, and, or is it for your own, you know, so mine is always the later part on my own, yeah, okay, so you feel liberated after that, you know, there are some minor hormone changes, you know, hormone changes, you know, where your body don't seem to produce testosterone or maybe you are lacking of estrogen or whatever it is, you know, so you tend to put on weight, you know, and that's the reason why, you know, many, many transsexuals who, who are into body image will settle for drugs to make sure that their body is still intact and model-like, you know. I don't go for all that, you know. That is a wrong concept for me. I have, a, I have a different concept in my life because I just 
know how beautiful it is when you accept yourself as you are. And now, I am a woman. Pondan, pondan is, is, is a word which is, uh, which is officially approved by the one Bahasa and Pustaka. So in, in any feature writing, the words will always be mentioned, you know, the words will always be mentioned. But in Malaysia, you know, we either call them TS, TG, or Matnya. TS is transsexual, TG is transgender, and Matnya is, is a very soft, uh, what do you call it, second name that, that, that you refer to, 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 to any transsexual or transgender. It still need to be used in, in feature writing because that's the word approved by the one Bahasa and Pustaka Malaysia, you know, to depict. A man who is sissy, or a man who lead life as a woman, you know. So that's that's the term they use. Even I myself is so scared to use it sometimes, you know. I prefer to people to call me uh, TS or TG, you know. And manya is fine with me. Manya is fine with me, but not that that, that P word, you know. I I've, I always get get a, get a shock when people make use of that uh, P word, you know. Okay, uh, manya, manya, transsexual, and transgender are known to, 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 to be to, to, to belong to a very high risk group because yeah they are very attractive. They attract men easily, you know. So when you attract men easily and you got attracted to men easily, so it will lead to sex. So all we need to do to ask them to do is just practice safe sex, you know. Practice safe sex, you know. I mean, you you you, you cannot ask them to refrain themselves from sex because that's a very uh, what do you call it? Normal human behavior, you know. So condoms, you know, and then information about STI and everything. It, it's not only about HIV and AIDS. Uh, can it, it is uh, something that we need to be scared. Is also STI, STI. Yeah. I think when 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 you when uh, the, the when we are talking about transgender and transsexual uh, regarding HIV, AIDS, uh, and STI, uh, the rate uh, the the rate has really gone down. Okay, the rate has really gone down because these are the group which is uh, before they were considered as high risk but uh, now with, with the reduction of the number uh, because of the advocacy work that is being done by Pink Triangle and some small NGOs they are well aware of it. When it comes to HIV and, and, and AIDS uh, and STI, uh, the transgender and transsexual they, they, they have a better exposure in that area better exposure anytime, anytime. This is way back since the 90s. Yeah, because we, 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 we feel the need to tell each other, you know, we did it because it's very dangerous, it's, it's almost no cure, you know, so we might as well, you know, explain to them at a very early age, you know, please practice, practice safe sex. the young transsexual to start finding jobs, you know, work at a place where uh, the whole uh, working society tolerate you, you know, you know, avoid all of this nonsense and integrity problems, you know, just go ahead, stay on, you know, be strong, uh, show good, show some good example, you will definitely be accepted, you, know, you will definitely be accepted, you know, even though I keep saying that accepted is a big word, Tolerance is just enough. I think there are there are people who who who, 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 who accept you very well in your life. I mean, there are. There are. Talking about what since you asked me what what is with uh, the young transsexual, you know, there is there is a segment that we, that we talk about among 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 friends. You know, we call this program Sundal Manya Malaysia. Okay. Program Sundal Manya Malaysia is a program where this young transsexual coming up very eager you know very eager to, to, to become uh, to lead life as, as a transsexual fully because because uh, they, they, they thought that okay the aim of, of eating hormone is to make them pretty when you are pretty men will love you and then you can always uh, be uh, a showgirl and lead a very glamorous life and everything these are all these are all meaningless is all meaningless you know not everybody can achieve that you know so it is it's a sad thing if a young transsexual fall into this program you know 
is a very wrong concept of living a life as a transsexual or transgender. People, you should not budge into their life too much, you know, because they are from a different generation and let them learn bit by bit, you know. Let them learn bit by bit and when they are really in trouble, they come forward. We can only brief them on, on, on HIV AIDS and any other sexually transmitted uh, infection, you know, we can always brief, uh, you know, that is very important. That is for their health and well-being, so we can always brief them on, on, on that only. The rest, their life, it is for, for them to handle by themselves, you know. But like I said, the, the young transsexual, they are very lucky because, you know, they have a very modern parents, you know. Modern parents normally, okay, normally will be able to tolerate all this, you know. But now, but now, uh, you know, you you know how once you once you have reached a certain phase of, of your life, you know how to respect the society around you. You you select carefully what you're gonna wear. You know, you select carefully what what kind of language you want you, you want you want to talk. You know, you you learn how to respect people better. You know, of course, you know because I remember uh, I remember very well those days. You know those days. I think the student now, uh, not to say they respect, they, they know the existence of transsexual because those days when we walk past school bus, we will avoid it as much as we, we, we could you know, in, in the 80s you know, we, because they'll be shouting, they'll be shouting. Now, you know, any transsexual that walk past a, a school bus, school student, they don't give a hoot, you know, they, don't, they don't give a hoot, you know, they don't, they don't even look at you sometimes because I think they are so used to, to, to this kind of people. It could be one of their uncle is a transsexual, you know, an auntie of them who is, is a lesbian, so it, it's nothing new anymore to them, you know, it, it's, it's not news anymore. Uh, after a long run of, of becoming a transsexual, you know, all of these uh, verbal abuses that you have come across those days, you know, I think it, 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 it makes you stronger makes you stronger you know plus with some advocacy work which is being done by Pink Triangle family planning uh, unit and everything I think people are more open people are more understanding you don't you don't be surprised not every at government agencies are mean they are not you know they are not you know they can they are they are very helpful they are very helpful you know, they're very helpful is a book that I wrote uh, to ensure that uh, the parents, uh, the society, you know, the matnya themselves, and uh, people in a health department will take notice and read. You know, what are the needs uh, to become a matnya? What are the problems to be a matnya? You know, uh, what sort of uh, what sort of turbulences matnya face in life? You know, and how can a matnya progress? You know, right from the very beginning until SRS, which is not necessary for for all manya. Okay, this 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 is this is this is not something compulsory. You know, and right how you you want to behave towards manya. You know, so there 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 will be a compilation of 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 uh, this sort of thing. You know, everything is about manya, even uh, a compil compilation of six story from six manya real manya who already lived their life, you know, yeah. When I myself as a transsexual found the story is, is it's so intriguing and, and I say to myself, oh my god, you know, you thought that you faced a lot of trouble in life. There are people who, who have come across something which is terrible, more terrible than you, so I'm less scared. I, 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 I've been painting ever since in my life, you know, uh, but painting was really expensive well, way, way back then, you know, you can't be painting when you are teenagers because where, where are you going to gain capital to do that? You know, canvas is expensive, colors is expensive, you know, you have an idea, but then again, how do you put it on, 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 on the canvas, you know? So when I started working and, and having extra money, you know, I started buying canvas and started doing, you know, putting all my imagination on, on, on canvas, you know. And thank God, when I got back to Penang, you know, when I got back, I, I was painting in Brunei also, but then again, uh, that was during my spare time and most, uh, I, I sell it to all of these expatriate friends of mine. So when I come back to Penang, uh, I live my life as a transsexual 24 hours uh, a day and I say, okay. It'll be fun to paint, so you paint, you paint, you know, paint, painting is, is, uh, 
stress a reliever. Yeah, you, you, you put all your emotion there. So you tell story and everything. Any kind of story you want to tell. Okay. So after after that, when when, when one of one, one of the important people in the art scene in Penang saw it, you know, say, oh, I don't know that you paint. I said, come over, take a look. So I was given a chance to in year two thousand four to have my own solo exhi exhibition. That was was held in uh, Ching Lotus, you know, one of the private gallery. Okay. And then the second was the second one was at. Uh, Juan Wong Art, uh, Art Gallery, you know, yeah, so I had two solo exhibitions so far, you know, and it's not easy coming up with solo exhibition. you need to have a good sponsorship, you know, you, ne you need to have a good publicist, you know, so I cannot afford to do it on, on a frequent basis, you know, do I click on, on, on canvas or I click on wood, you know, and my object will always be women and transsexual leading their life, you know. Thought artists, I'm self thought artist, you know, so I just paint whatever I feel like painting, you know. I, well, uh, it's good if you are able to get a uh, formal education in arts, but so far, most of them who, who, who are very soulful are those who are self thought, you know, in, in, in Malaysia especially. Okay, okay. that is liberation. Uh, something, my very first project right after I come back from. SRS about a week like that. I'm for so bored, so I started painting. That is Bukit Murtajam as 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 a backdrop, you know. That is a myth of 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 oh, you know, fat lady being accused as lonely. You know, they enjoy food all the time. You know, lonely because the cat is there. You know, I think this 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 is, this is painting uh, is is when I started to gain weight after some hormonal problem in the body, you know, adjusting right after SRS. So, you know, you tend to put a little bit of weight, you know, so I was so worried. So I think I come up with this idea, you know, female and their body issues. Whatever you want, whatever you need, everything you want done, baby, I'll do it naturally cause I'm every woman it's all in me